Hi all, let's look at the amazing game five from the recent Alpha Zero against Stockfish match. So Alpha Zero playing white, D4. We go into the Queen's Engine defense. So the Queen's Engine defense, and we have this pawn sacrifice repeated, which Alpha Zero clearly thinks is pretty good for white. And it was a favorite of Kasparov as well, as well, who had many amazing games of this pawn sack. But what's really interesting as well now is we go into kind of a second pawn sacrifice after knight e8 e5 is played so two pawns down here but it's very very dynamic compensation knight c3 knight b7 we have knight e4 gaining a tempo h4 further going to be harassing the queen here it seems so a parking spot is made h5 queen h7 queen g4 which sets up knight f6 as a threat. That's the immediate threat to parry, forking king and queen. And king h8 was played. This is already getting a bit shocking. If f5, believe it or not, queen f4 is actually pretty good for white. For example, f takes, bishop takes. This is nice. The most ridiculous variation here is queen h8. White can simply, guess what white can simply play in this position. This is really ridiculous. If I give you five seconds okay bishop g6 this is just winning for white after rook takes bishop takes there's a big threat of rookie eight black can try in a ridiculous manner to try and stop that for example like this but it's just going to end up losing all of its material and still rookie eight is going to be winning <laughs> so yeah this this line is very very interesting if um takes here yeah uh takes and now uh say rook takes f4 this is also good for white this position it seems as though there's good coordination on g7 in this line so white actually has a big advantage here as well yeah it seems already a little bit shocking this this the tactical concepts but things are getting even more shocking now uh, after the move played king h8 can you guess what white plays which is one of the most engine shocking moves of the year in my view or maybe just generally one of the most shocking moves of the year outrageous and shocking white play here if i give you five seconds to pause the video what do you think white played Move 21. Okay, Bishop G5. It sets up a threat of Knight F6, which will be lethal just to show that on the board. We don't want this position black. That's end of game after Queen G7 to take it, mate. So, but there, now there's like HG and F5 to consider. Black played up uh, here. After bishop g5, black played f5. Now let's have a look though if h takes g is played to understand or other move 21s. So f5 was the move 21 played. If bishop c4 on move 21 instead, then knight f6, queen d3, bishop takes h6. This is really good stuff tactically. Queen f4. And this position ends up being very difficult for black. Yep, that wins the game after winning the queen. So move 21, yeah, this is um, the bishop c4 examined on this amazing bishop g5. If the bishop's taken, knight takes, queen g8, there's a, an amazing move here. Queen h4 just setting up the slow h6. So let's see bishop d3 h6 and this is actually very very good for white as well yep <laughs> so yeah there's there's very very interesting stuff in these lines uh so let's go back so bishop g5 
So move 21s, we looked at bishop c4, h takes. Uh, also, by the way, on hg, this this queen d3, guess what white can play in this variation? If I give you five seconds. Okay, knight takes f7 is crushing here. For example, like this. Check, and then bishop e4 check, winning that queen. Yep. So yeah, this bishop g5 is really quite fascinating. So in the game we see f5, queen f4. Okay, while it's pinning that pawn, isn't the bishop able to be taken here? Black actually ignored taking the bishop and played knight c5. Now let's take the bishop and see what happens. Knight takes, queen g8, rook e7. And there's a big threat of h6 here for rook h7. So say black tries to parry that with rook f6. h6 anyway. Let's say rook takes, knight f7 check. This position is going to be crushing. Yeah, it's absolutely crushing. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of very, very interesting lines here. That was for taking the bishop after queen f4, taking the bishop. Uh, so let's continue with the game. Knight c5 was played. Bishop e7, knight d3. Queen goes into d6. Okay, so this this looks absolutely crazy. What's going on here? Black played knight takes e1, rook takes e1, f takes, bishop takes e4. We have rook f5, and now bishop h4, which makes way for in lines some lines for the check on the back row. And black is having difficulty with the back row here. You can see these tangled pieces here. If white's not careful, say g4 was played, then actually rook d5 is a good resource for black. Believe it or not. For example, like this. This is actually potentially uh, technically equal. Yeah, so white's got to have great precision. And this, this bishop h4 does seem to be the most precise way of playing the position with that nasty pin there on the rook. We have bishop c4. You can see a big difference is now with access to the back row. If rook d5 was played here, then just taking and then check is it's going to be winning. So yeah. So bishop c4, g4 now exploiting the pin like that. Rook d5 here. After bishop takes d5, bishop takes, rook e8 check, bishop g8, bishop g3. So white, although a piece down here, rook bishop and queen against rook bishop queen knight. Look at black's queen side, the tangling of the queen side and this nasty pin on g8. It's like being pinned on both sides of the board. Uh, so c5 was tried. This is very, very desperate. Uh, basically, this c5 it allows queen d5 looking at a8. But what else was there in this position? Uh, it's, it's pretty hopeless. Uh, okay, so c5 offering that rook now after knight d7 queen e4 why is the exchange up and actually it's just a matter of really it's, it's, it's a matter of technique now a lot of the damage has already been done here at move 36 so let's see knight takes the exchange up in this end game and these pawns are quite vulnerable. It's really a matter of technique now. So we see good endgame technique. Uh, 
and yeah th there is some work to be done inroads have been made yeah these pawns are starting to drop off Yeah, that b5 is now under scrutiny. What is h3? Blockade on the dark squares. Okay. It's a slow grind, as they say. A slow but careful grind. And now this pawn's also dropping off. And it's really becoming hopeless now. It's pretty clear. Black is not having too many chances here after losing this other pawn now. And it carries on and on until move 117, rook d3. So anyway, I really wanted to emphasize the spectacular start bit of the game with that amazing bishop g5. Well, and the initial the you know, double pawn sack. This is like very fan very dynamic aggressive ideas against the queen's engine when this initial pawn sack is played this d5. So yeah, uh very big game there. So game 5 fascinating stuff. I hope you'll agree. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.